What's up random internet people? Today we're going to be learning about how to code a countdown timer in Python. Now recently I had a poll on my channel and I was asking you guys, you know, what would you like to see in terms of content? A lot of you answered that you'd actually like to see more languages. So usually I specialize in C Sharp and other ones, but um, I know Python as well. So today we'll be learning how to code a countdown timer in Python and it should be pretty easy. Also 95% of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you can read this, then come on. So without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. All right, guys, we're ready to create our Python application, so let's go ahead and hop right into it. Let's click here. Um, make sure you have Python installed, obviously, and just click Python application. And we're going to click Next. We're going to call it um, Countdown Timer. All right, now that we have our project loaded up, let's go ahead and start by importing some libraries that we're going to be using. So the first thing that we need to say is uh, import time. We're going to be using the time library, which is a default Python library that allows us to manipulate time or, you know, just use time in our project. Another thing that we're going to be using is the Tkinter library, which allows us to make interfaces and stuff like that. So we're going to say from Tkinter import star, meaning we want to import everything. And then also from there, we want to import the message box specifically. And then let me make sure that this is spelled right. All right, we have those three things out of the way. Now we have all our stuff imported that we need. And let's just just hop right into the fun stuff. But first, let's take a quick break for a nice meme. Ah, yeah, that was, that was refreshing. All right, back to business here. So first, we're going to just add a quick comment, and we're going to say that we want to create the interface object. Basically, we want to uh, create like a Tkinter object. So we're going to call it clock window is equal to TK and just initialize it as that. Actually, make sure you have a capital T. So that's going to give us a TK object. Next thing that we're gonna do is set the actual size of our interface. So we're gonna say clock window dot geometry, open up these brackets here, and then we're gonna say 500 by 500. Basically, we want it to be 500 pixels by 500 pixels tall. Then we're gonna set the title of the program. So we're gonna say clock window dot title, and we're just gonna call it countdown timer. Let's just add a little bit of flair, and we're just gonna say clock window dot configure background property is going to be set to any color you'd like. I'm just gonna pick orange. Hopefully it's a good orange and we enjoy it. All right, the next thing we need to do is generate three strings that we're gonna be using to keep track of the hours, minutes, and seconds for this app. So we're gonna say our string is equal to string var, minute string equal to string var, and then finally second string is equal to string var. All right, awesome. We have our three strings out of the way. Um, let's go ahead and set them to an initial default value. So we're gonna say um, set strings to default value. And then we're just gonna say our string dot set, and then we're literally just gonna set it to a double zero. We're just gonna do the same thing for all three. So go ahead and copy this two more times and just replace the values here. And then we're also gonna add a comment up here, say declare variables. Now we have three sets of uh, nice blocks of code. We've initialized some things. So now let's actually do a little bit more of the fun stuff. Next, we're going to need a way to actually get data from the user. And the way we're going to do that is with text boxes. So we're going to use these text boxes so that they can type in it. And then not only that, but we're also going to use the same text boxes to display the running time. So let's say that we're going to get user input. So the first thing we want to do is create like one text box. We're going to say our text box and we're going to create an entry object. The entry object is going to be uh, spawned from the clock window interface that we created up here. So we're going to say clock window. We're going to give it a width of three. We're going to set the font because we're awesome like that. So we're going to just say, I don't know, Calibri size 20 font and some, some blank stuff here, a comma. And then the variable that we want to spawn from the input from this box is going to be called our string. So basically that any input that comes from this box, we're going to point it to the our string variable that we made up here. Also, one more thing, I forgot to put an equal sign after font here that should fix our errors. So now we're going to need three more of these. So go ahead and copy that two more times. And we need to change this to minutes. And down here, this needs to be second. So the interface that we made, we have three text boxes and we have just um, an orange background, right? These text boxes are going to probably be by default in the top left. So I, I wanted them to actually be in the center so it looks sort of nice. So we're actually going to manually do that and we're going to say um, center text boxes. And the way we're going to do that is say our text box dot place, access the place property, open up these parentheses here. And then the X coordinate is going to be 170 for the hours one and Y coordinate is going to be 180. And then go ahead and copy this and 
copy the dot place portion of it. We're just going to change the X coordinate. We want them to obviously all be in line, so we're going to keep the Y coordinate the same, but we're going to space them approximately 50 pixels apart. So this is going to be 220. And this one's going to be 270. All right, hopefully you guys are following along. And um, if nothing makes sense right now, don't worry. Um, I'll try to explain it a little bit. And it'll make a lot more sense once we actually launch our app and we see how everything looks. All right, so next we actually need the function that's going to power this uh, timer that we have. So run timer is going to be the name of it. And we're just going to tab in here. The very first thing we want to do is we're going to call this function after the user clicks a button. Basically, when they click the button, that's going to say like, hey, I'm done entering my time. Now I want to start the timer. So we're going to assume that that's already happened. And we're going to just create a try loop here. All right. So inside this try loop, the very first thing we're going to do is try to set the clock time uh, based on the series of inputs that the user gave. First of all, that the clock time is equal to, we're gonna cast everything in here to an integer. We're just going to calculate the raw time. We're gonna take the hour, minute, and seconds text box, kind of just combine it all together, and then we're gonna do math on it later. So the first thing we wanna do is our string dot get. So we're gonna grab the value from the text box and multiply it by 3600. The reason we're doing that is let's say they entered, I don't know, one into the text box. We need to multiply it by 3600 because there's 3600 seconds in an hour. This is obviously the hours text box. So we're starting with that. Um, this is going to be hours and then we're going to go on to minutes and seconds. So now let's say plus we're going to cast this part in an int as well. And my bad guys, um, just erase this parenthesis here and just cast it right after this. We're individually wrapping these things in ints and then adding them together. So then we're gonna need a second int here and now we need to do the minute string dot get. And in here, we're gonna multiply this by 60 because obviously 60 seconds in one minute. And then finally, we're gonna cast one last int. And once again, I forgot my close my parentheses over here so go ahead and do that but then we're gonna say second string and then just get the value from that text box so all in all our clock time is obviously going to be our hours minutes and seconds um, we're pulling all the values out of all three text boxes and doing some math on it to just make it work and then for whatever reason if something happens let's just say an exception is fired we're just going to simply print out to the user that hey there's a problem so let's just say incorrect values basically if this cannot be set properly there's probably something wrong with the values that the user put in there all right now that we have the clock time from the user we have a raw amount of seconds basically we're going to start a loop and every iteration of this loop we're obviously going to subtract one second until we hit zero so how we're going to do that is we're going to say while and then basically say while the clock time of this thing is actually greater than a negative one then we want to do all the stuff in here First, we need to get do some math and figure out how many minutes and seconds we have going on here. So we're going to say that total minutes and total seconds is equal to. And then we're going to use a function called div mod. So basically uh, what you're going to do is you're going to pass in two numbers, um, kind of like a numerator and a denominator. It's going to do division. The first number total minutes is going to be um, the first number that's returned from here. And the second number that's returned from here is the remainder from this. So, you know, if we took like, I don't know, 10 divided by two, obviously that's five and the remainder is zero. So this would be set to five and this would be set to zero. But if there was a remainder, like let's just say the remainder was one, this would be one and this would be whatever the quotient was. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the current clock time that we got from earlier and just divide it by 60. That way we're gonna get the total amount of minutes. Anything left over that is going to be the amount of seconds. Next, we're gonna set our total hours equal to zero. We're just gonna initialize it as that. And then we're gonna add an if statement here. And then we're gonna say basically for every time that total minutes is greater than 60, we want to convert those into hours. So we're gonna say total hours and total minutes it's equal to once again we're going to use this div mod function here and then this time instead of clock time we're going to use total minutes and we're going to divide that by 60 once again but you know let's say we had uh, up here this returned i don't know 93 minutes that would be an hour and 33 minutes so down here we'd say okay 93 minutes divided by 60 that's like 1.3 something or you know sorry one and a half ish and then uh, this would be one and this would be you know the remainder of that so that's what this whole if statement's for that's that way we can get our hours next now that we have our hours we want to actually um fill in the text boxes that we created earlier with the values that we just got 
So how we're going to do that is we're going to call it, so our string, and we're going to set the value of it once again. And we're going to set that, and here's a clever little thing you can do. We're going to use a string, and we're going to say squiggly brackets, a 0, and a 2D. And this will let us uh, format the time. And then we're going to call it dot .format property, and we're going to pass in total hours. So if you don't know how this works, basically we're saying, hey, the hour string that we created earlier, we're setting the value to this. But this, since it's in squiggly brackets, is going to allow us to substitute in a variable, and the variable is total hours, and we're formatting it. Um, that way it fits in there and it works perfectly. Sorry if I didn't explain it well enough. Go ahead and read up about this to try to make more sense of it, or you know, comment down below if you don't understand. The next thing we're going to do is basically the exact same thing, but a few more times. And obviously instead of our string, we're going to do a minute string, and then we're going to use second string. And instead of total hours and total hours again, we're going to use you know total minutes here and then total seconds down here all right the next thing we want to do is we're going to say update the interface every iteration of this loop obviously some values change around we want to um, give the user an updated look as to what's actually happening we need to say that the clock window object we created earlier just update and that's just a nice little function that will like you know update all the current values that it's set to if you don't call this it'll just be stagnant and then the next thing we want to do is just say time.sleep1. What this is doing is we're calling our time um, object and we're just saying, hey, go to sleep for one second. And, you know, we don't have a time variable anywhere, but we did import time as you see up here. And what that's doing is literally just like syncing this loop in with the time. So every second this loop is going to run, which uh, is perfect because that's in sync with actual time. Next thing we want to do is um, let the user know if the timer expires. So let the user know if timer has expired. And we're just going to have a simple if here. And we're going to say, hey, if the clock time is equal to zero, then just let them know with the message box. So we're going to say message box dot show info. And then there's two parameters we need. This is the title of it. I'm just not going to give it a title because I don't know. It's so small. There's no point. And then um, the second part is going to be the content of the message box. And we're going to just say, hey, your time has expired. And the last thing we want to do inside of this function here is just uh, decrease the value of the clock time by one. Obviously, the whole loop ran um, and, you know, one second has passed. So now we would just want to take the total amount of seconds and just decrease it by one. So we're just going to say clock time is minus equal to one. All right, we have finished our function. And as you see, um, I went back in spacing here. So now, you know, because there's no brackets in Python, it's, it's a little confusing sometimes. But um, here's our definition or our function. Um, if you just get out of it and backspace twice, now we're ready to do some other fancy stuff. But first, another meme break. Ah, nothing like a good old meme right to keep you guys uh, interested and in here. Hopefully that was a dank meme, but if it wasn't, then I'm sorry. But now we're going to do a fun thing such as adding a button to the screen so that the users can click it and set the time. So we're going to say button, and actually no, that's too plain. We're going to say uh, set time button is equal to, and then we're going to call a button object, and we're going to create this here. We're going to say, hey, it's going to be inside of the clock window um, object that we created from earlier. The text for it is going to say set the time. Then we're going to say BD equals five, and that's how many screen units that this thing takes up. And then the command that it runs whenever they click it is going to be equal to set timer. So that function we created from earlier, it's going to call that um, whenever we click this button, oh, actually it's run timer, my bad. So run timer is what we want to call whenever the user clicks the button. Next thing we want to say is, hey, this set timer button, um, where do we actually want to place it on the screen? So we're going to say set time button dot place. And then we're going to say for the X coordinate. And then this is a little different than earlier. So we're going to say RELX is equal to 0 0.5. And then RELY is also equal to... 0.5 and finally what we want to say is anchor is equal to center in all caps so basically these three parameters is going to allow us to perfectly center our button in the middle of the form i could go more in depth of how all this works but i don't think it's really necessary just know that when we launch this the buttons will be in the or the one button will be in the middle of the screen and then finally we just want to keep this looping so we're going to say hey keep looping clock window of ours is going to keep running the main loop and just keep it going. All right, guys, we are done with our code, but hang on, I've noticed one little glitch here. 
I forgot to change this value here. So let's say minute string. And then this is going to be second string. All right, guys, another typo I, I missed here is what, these freaking parentheses up here. Make sure that they're actually right before the multiplication sign of each one. And then just remove the last bracket here. We're, we're converting the string from the text box into an integer then doing math all right now that we've done that i think we fixed our bugs and uh we are ready to launch it so let's see how it works all right so i'm gonna do no hours um no minutes and i don't know five seconds let's just see if it works so here we are we have five four three two and one and bam and now our message box has come up we click ok and there we go we have a perfectly working app and that's awesome we are done hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh please comment down below if you had any uh, questions or issues i'd be happy to help you um obviously like the video because i'm awesome and this video is awesome and you had fun right subscribe to my channel if you like content like this and thank you guys for watching once again and i'll see you in the next one